it seems like standard practice in the entertainment industry across the spectrum, whether we're talking about TV, comic books, movies, or even video games, if you make something featuring a minority or a person of color or a woman, you have a built-in marketing tactic where you can say, if you don't buy this, it must just be because you're racist. It must just be because you're a misogynist, because you're a bigot. Whether this is coming from the entertainment company themselves or from the mainstream media. And that's exactly what we've seen with the game Forspoken. With so many people, so many activists in the media saying, if you don't support this game, the people that are hating this game, it must just be because of the color of the main protagonist's skin. And they've tried tactics like this over and over again, and every time, it backfires on them, and that's exactly what's happening with Forspoken. Now, even though the critics were very mad on it, some people gave it raving reviews, some people gave it pretty bad reviews, a 68 overall score for Metacritic, the critic score, but the user score, that is a different story. A four right now, with a lot of negative reviews for Forspoken. But you know, the funny thing is, when you go through all of these, not one single one, as I go through, I scrolled through probably, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 of the top reviews for this game, none of them say anything about the color of the person's skin. Yet people are still saying, if you don't like it, it must just be because you hate black women. Isn't that interesting? We're gonna go through some of these. And yes, some of them do say the main character is very unlikable. But that has, that's not coded language. That has nothing to do with someone's skin color. and everything to do with the dialogue they chose to use for this protagonist. We played this before. I'm going to play this again. Imagine going through an entire game where this is the conversation between the main protagonist and the person that's right there on their wrist. Did I just do that? Well, definitely with my assistance. I did not just do that. We did. I just moosh it with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just move shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. Now you're just being ridiculous. Oh, that's too far. Good to know there's a line. If you could just master these new abilities. Now... This might be relatable or cool to some people. The vast majority of people think this is cringe. And this dialogue, is it's just like this throughout the entire freaking game. There's even options in the game to make the main character not talk as much. Maybe because they knew that people would find it a little bit cringe-inducing. And then when you actually look at the technical specs, when you look at this game, even though it's only been released on PlayStation 5 and PC, only on one next-gen console and on PC, and on PC, the requirements are ridiculous to get this thing to run, it doesn't look as good as games that came out a decade ago. Look at this. This is in the middle of uh, Digital Foundry's review. And I love Digital Foundry. I love watching them break down the technical aspect. This is Assassin's Creed Unity on the left. Look at the lighting and the graphics and how it looks compared to Forspoken. Assassin's Creed Unity. This is a game that relies entirely on baked lighting. When placed side by side against Forspoken, I think the results speak for themselves. Even when you just look at some of the details on either the walls or the ground or whatever, it's crazy and a lot of people are having problems with this. The performance mode, which is supposed to be locked at 60 FPS, it's going down to 30 FPS in some regions in the game and some areas in the game, just not up to what everybody thought the standard would be. But let's get into some of these reviews, right? Because what are, again, what are these people saying? I'm enjoying this game despite reviews to the point where I think some of the reviews are either racist or sexist. What about this guy? No way motherfuckers trying to accuse people who hate Forspoken's writing as being racist. The flack y'all given Forspoken seems real force. Wonder what it could be. Can't quite put my finger on it, according to this guy. The ridiculous in this notion, if you criticize Forspoken's annoying chatter, boring gameplay, denotes that you're somehow racially motivated. I'm a man of color, and I don't like this game. I must be a racist, too. So this conversation is ongoing right now. But when we look at this, let's look at these reviews. Let's see if we can find any racism here. Whatever few positive points I came to say about this game, traversal is satisfying, later on as more movement abilities, are swallowed up totally in the cloud of Forspoken's mediocre graphics, disturbingly bad writing, 
and shallow combat. A disaster of a game with a particularly unlikable protagonist. Whoa, this game's really bad. Somehow the writers managed to create possibly the most irritating and unlikable character in the history of gaming, who's incapable of uttering a single sentence without swearing constantly. She's bitter, mean, and horrible in every way. Damn, didn't think it was gonna suck this bad. First disappointment of 2023. I don't, maybe this is super racist, right? Maybe this is super racist. It's in Spanish or something. They do say Force Woken, which is pretty funny. That's the only part I can see here. Uh, we knew from the trailers the protagonist would be annoying as hell. I thought that I could just change the language to Japanese and everything would be solid. I should have known better. Not only is the protagonist super annoying, but everything is terrible. Poor story and writing, shallow combat, disappointing graphics. The game is a pure joke, poor story, downgraded graphics, a bland open world, bad dialogue, and soundtrack that's annoying. Only upside is fluid and fast, but that alone isn't worth uh, the 80 euros for the standard European version. Uh, the game looks last gen and plays horribly. What gets a really low score is the disaster of a story, a main character that completely fails and who hates every single minute of her life. None here about wow. I really can't stand her because she's black. I can't believe they made her black. The only people that are actually talking about the race of this character are, ironically, journalists. This is on Polygon's review. They're upset that the fact that the main character is black doesn't really have anything to do with the story. Listen to this. Before I wrap up, let's spare a word for Frey, a notionally black, black protagonist who joins a growing trend in media of putting black people in worlds where race is inconsequential. Except the game is very insistent that Frey's a New Yorker, mysterious birth or no, spending her life up to this point growing up in our decided non-fantasy world where blackness is a non-factor. Regrettably, Frey's identity is thinly written and awkwardly deployed as the story leans not only on stereotypical narratives, but trauma as a plot device. They are mad that the, they don't address the fact that she's black more, that her blackness isn't more a part of the character. And this goes all the way back to even a year and a half ago when the devs were talking about this and they decided that the devs, they're not black enough to handle a black character. That's what the mainstream media decided to say. They are the ones who have been focusing on this. I, I wanna go all the way down to when they were talking about that. They were upset because not a lot of black people were on the development team. Can they really authentically do a black character? My newfound fears weren't helped when they described Frey's origin story, which came off as a tired amalgamation of black stereotypes, including being very angry. I I'm not black. People describe me as very angry all the time. Having fallen through the cracks of society and being on the verge of prison before being teleported. The cherry on top was the newfound dread was this person describing the mannerisms during mo motion capture as having a very hip hoppy kind of walk. The entire time, the only people that have been focused on this have pretty much been the mainstream media. Not even in the game itself did they really push that type of narrative. The reality is, People don't like this game because they think the dialogue is terrible. They find the entire premise to be pretty cringe. And at the end of the day, people are bashing it for the way it looks and the way it performs. That's it. On PC, it's getting slammed even worse. A 2.5 on PC for Forspoken, maybe because of so many of those problems that people are having. Either way, I think it's going to continue to get worse for this game as the journalists, as people in the gaming industry, the woke mob out there will continue to push the idea that if you don't like it, it must be because you're a bigot. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later.